Look, if you have one shot or one opportunity to grow everything you ever wanted in one food forest, would you plant it or just keep the grass clipped? Yo, ground is ready, seeds fly, broad folks hold it steady. There's figs in my tree already. Nitrogen fixes are plenty, no stopping this ecosystem. All your lawns are so petty, and I'm planting abundance of what I'm getting. So don't be forgetting food gardens, yo. Yeah. So snap back to banality, perfect grass was the finality Yo, but I will not miss my chance to grow The opportunity is once in a lifetime You gotta lose yourself, you gotta plant a food for us Hey, welcome to another edition of Crazy Gardening Questions Some people might think I'm a little extreme about food forests Like I'm really obsessed with it Like it's the sort of thing that I think about all the time And uh that maybe I wrote a book on it. But fact is, I think it's one of the greatest ecosystems that you can create, one of the most wonderful ways to garden, one of the greatest ways to get back to nature and get wildlife into your yard and feed your family and have a garden that takes less work over time rather than more work over time. And I'm now on my fourth or fifth different food forest project. A um, few of them have been simultaneous. But the one that I've created here in North Florida is just an incredible ecosystem and people remark on how many butterflies are in the yard. They cannot believe there are so many butterflies. Same thing about honeybees and I have counted beetles and spiders and frogs and all kinds of stuff that you normally don't see. But beside that, the real point of a food forest is growing food. And in that vein, I'm going to answer a couple of questions today from people in climates which are not the best suited necessarily to food forests. Starting with Luetta from Alaska, she writes, I am a master canner, unfortunately not a master gardener. I would like to develop a food forest that will grow in Talkeetna, Talkeetna, Alaska. I have five acres and a lot of space to put plants if I knew where to start. Is there anyone in my area I could contact? Do you have any suggestions or plans that would give me a starting point? We have gotten down to minus 60 15 years ago. Lately, minus 20 has been the worst. I would like to build a greenhouse this coming summer. I have done some research on compost pile heating for the far north and will try it out next winter. I could use any information you might want to pass on. Thank you for reading this. The further north you get, the less likely it was that indigenous populations lived off of vegetables. Uh, when you get really to the far north, you get folks eating whales and seals and caribou and doing a lot of that kind of hunting to keep themselves alive because really the number of edible crops you can grow shrinks as the growing season shrinks and there's really not a lot of time to ripen up something like peaches even you know when you've got such a short period of time and you've got such extreme climates a lot of the wonderful fruit that we take for granted further south just doesn't grow so you could perhaps farm wolves and eat them or maybe snow rabbits you know but um really Look and see what's growing locally, first of all, and if there are good established forests, and ask yourself what growing here is useful or edible. And then look at what other people are growing and say, hey, what are you growing? What are you having success with? Talk to the agricultural extensions, and definitely, like I said, go to permies.com, which is the biggest permaculture site on the internet. And I've had some interaction with Paul Wheaton, and the guy is brilliant. So go see this awesome empire that he created over there and sign up and start asking questions. And there's some very nice people over there. The forums are moderated quite in a, in a very friendly fashion. And um, go ask your questions, and you'll find people there that will give you lots of answers. The next question I got is from a climate that's not nearly so rough. Frederica writes, I saw you on Marjorie's Summit. That's Marjorie Wildcraft. Uh, I live in Maryland and have two apples I have two apple trees in my backyard next to my compost bin and garden. It's getting colder now, so my garden is not being used. I would like you to recommend some plants and flowers I could put around the apple trees. I'm 64 and hope to live long enough to build even a small food forest. My yard is part sun and lots of shade, but my apple trees are in a sunny part of the yard on the north side. I want to do the challenge. Now, I challenge people to take a piece of their lawn and turn it into a food forest. So that's the challenge he's talking about. It was in a recent article over at uh, GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Will you please help me with some suggestions? I thank you, sir. My son will be so excited I took this step. Okay, when I lived in Tennessee, there was a lot of stuff I could grow in Tennessee that I can't grow down here in Florida. And in Maryland, there's stuff that you can grow that I definitely can't grow down here in Florida. So some of the plants I would go for would be gooseberries, 
currants, thornless blackberries, nanking cherries, blueberries, strawberries, horseradish, rhubarb, Jerusalem artichokes, comfrey, Siberian pea shrub, echinacea, sea buckthorn. I mean, there's a lot of different options for things that you can plant uh, around those apple trees. And I'm looking small fruiting shrubs like the gooseberries and um, currants. And then you've got nitrogen fixing edible shrubs like Siberian pea shrub and uh, sea buckthorn. I mean, there's some really exciting stuff you can grow up there. And you can grow down ground cover layer, um, your echinaceas, you can grow mints, you can grow um, various herbs, and you can mix in all these small fruits around the base of those and let them grow up underneath the apples and definitely do the comfrey thing because comfrey is great around an apple tree because you can cut it and drop it as a fertilizer and it acts like a mulch and it helps keep the um, grasses back because grasses and trees do not get along so if you have a big circle around that tree that doesn't have any grass in it that's great another thing you can plant are different types of perennial onions I'm sure there's perennial onions for your areas perhaps ramps will grow and I love the horseradish when I used to be in Tennessee I loved growing that horseradish is wonderful stuff and I also think it repels nematodes which may or may not be a problem up in Maryland but there are a few suggestions and I recommend you jump on it and get out there with those apples and start doing some cool stuff and I'll bet you the apples do better too just think you know if your neighbors have something pretty that's flowering and it brings in a lot of insects plant one of those next to the apple tree and bring in the insects you know if there's something tasty and it's not a huge tree or a huge shrub and you think hey I want to plug that in there go ahead and plug it in I mean it's a lot of fun to try and figure out what's gonna work but the trick is, I think, is not to get too hung up in the details, but to plant a lot of interesting things and then just see what happens. Plants are not that expensive. Seeds are not expensive. And if you start things from cuttings and seeds, it's really cheap. It only costs you a little bit of time. So Maryland is a great place to garden. Go for it. Do it. That ought to be awesome. I'll catch up with you all next time. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you around the web over at thesurvivalgardener.com.